Hey guys, Wade Willis here doing my playthrough of Umineko. I believe this is part eight and stuff is really picking up here. Uh, the grandfather has set everything up into motion for Beatrice to be uh, resurrected or perhaps his family to find his treasure. Most likely, since this is going to go badly, I'm guessing uh, <laughs> Beatrice is going to get uh, resurrected. Um, the first part of this riddle, it talks about like six people being selected. Well, there's about to be six people out in the rain during the typhoon because Maria is missing. So the four grandchildren, including Maria, um, one of the servants, and then Maria's mother are all out there. So shit's about to hit the fan. Super pumped for this. Don't forget to uh, like the video and subscribe to my channel. Going through this whole game. And yeah, excited to see this. George and I flew out into the rain. Jessica and Cannon followed us. Maria! If you're there, answer me. Maria! It's Aunt Rosa. Hey, Aunt Rosa. When George called back, Aunt Rosa jumped at him and grabbed onto him. Where's Maria? Isn't she with you? No, we didn't meet with Maria Chan after that. Maria! Six years ago, Maria was three years old. She was a cute and pure kid who just accepted whatever anyone said. But six years have passed since then. She's nine now and experiencing the ups and downs of life. I should have taught her something. But Maria, you're telling me that you're still as innocent as pure as you used to be? Maria! As I circled the rosebud, something white unexpectedly turned to face me. It was a white umbrella. Maria was crouching, holding a white umbrella, and still searching for that rose. Her face, which had turned bright red from crying her eyes out, was dirty with water and mud. It was truly a pitiful sight. Maria, are you still looking? Oh, can't find it, can't find my rose. Oh. Maria had probably been there since the rain started pouring down. Her shoulders were freezing. She looked tired to the bone, but fortunately, since she was holding her umbrella, she wasn't completely soaked. The umbrella probably came from the handbag Maria was carrying around. Thank goodness. Seriously, thank goodness. I don't think it was in her handbag, personally, but we'll find out, I guess. Battler Coon, thank goodness you found her. Maria! I'm sorry, I'm so sorry! Aunt Rosa threw her umbrella aside and hugged Maria. Ooh, it's not here. My rose isn't here. Ooh. I'll look for it with you later, okay? So just put it on hold for today, okay? Ooh, put it on hold for today. It looked like Maria still wasn't able to accept it, but she no longer had enough energy left to resist. Jessica and Cannon King caught up with us. I'll have a towel ready in the mansion immediately. Maria? Were you here this whole time? I'm sorry. I'm sorry for being such a bad mother. Aunt Rosa, why don't we head back to the mansion for the time being? If we stay here, Maria will catch a cold. You're right. Maria, let's go. If we don't get you cleaned up, Grandfather will be mad. Ooh, hungry. It's already time to eat. You did a good job holding out, Maria. Once the weather gets better, we'll all go search together. We couldn't stay in the rain forever. We took Maria with us and headed back to the mansion. Maria apparently wasn't as worn out as I had thought. When she remembered we were having calf steak for dinner, she started chanting, I'm hungry, I'm hungry, ooh, ooh, and returned to her usual spirited self. Aunt Rosa didn't chide Maria for saying, ooh, ooh. I see. So she had an umbrella on her. Maria sure is good at picking the right stuff. Ooh, I didn't bring an umbrella. Ooh. What? Then how'd you get a white umbrella you're holding? Ooh, I borrowed it. Some caring person must have brought her umbrella. A normal kid would look for shelter once it started raining, but Maria was too stubborn to give, it, give up so easily. So maybe the caring person gave up on telling Maria to find shelter, then uh, decided to at least give her an umbrella. I see. 
I'll have to thank that person. Who was it? <sighs> Beatrice, I knew it. The name Maria cheerfully mentioned was that of the island's witch. Rosa took a deep breath again, trying to do so in a way that wouldn't damage Maria's good mood. Really? That's wonderful. So who was it? Who brought you that umbrella? Ooh, Beatrice! Ooh, ooh. Maria er, immediately realized her mother didn't believe her and started crying out unhappily again. Aunt Rosa stopped pursuing the subject. It'd probably be faster to ask whoever lent Maria the umbrella during dinner, rather than ask Maria herself. I knew it was her. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but still. I'm excited for her. Father, please at least join us for dinner. It won't be a family conference otherwise. Along with a dull pounding on the door, the sound of Krause's entry, uh, entry could be heard. However, the voice seemed to be resigned to the fact that nothing uh, it said would be heard. kinzo son, would you at least come out for dinner? All of your children are gathered here to see, the, see your face, haven't they? Silence, Nanjo. So, the bishop won't work. One move too short. Apparently, Kinzo was completely focused on the final battle of his long-lasting chess match with Nanjo. Kinzo borrowed... Kinzo's brow wrinkled as he continued to glare at the game board through his spectacles. Cross's voice didn't reach his ears. Kinzo-san, I'm hungry myself. Why don't we go down and eat? Go by yourself if that's what you want. Let me consider this next move for a little longer. We're going to finish it tonight. Otherwise, it's doubtful we'll finish it before the world ends. Nanjo rose from his seat, hoping this would prompt Kinzo to do the same, but Kinzo's eyes never left the chessboard. He knew well that Kinzo always displayed a buying concentration when it came to chess, but he'd never seen Kinzo concentrate as hard as this. It was almost as though Kinzo was telling the truth and that there would never be another chance for them to continue their contest if they didn't finish tonight. It seemed that no matter how obstinately he called out to Kinzo, it wouldn't reach the latter's heart. Nanjo gave up and headed to the door that Krauss was still banging on. The door to the study opened. Krauss was taken aback, thinking it might be Kinzo, thinking maybe Kinzo was actually coming out. However, Nanjo was the one who appeared, and Krauss let out a sigh of relief. Dr. Nanjo, is father... I'm sorry, I couldn't be his service. Right now, this room is Kinzo's son's whole world. Nanjo shook his head with a completely defeated expression. Kraus raised his fist once more and banged on the door, shouting, Father, can you hear me? We're heading down now, but please join us anytime you feel like it. All of your children are waiting for you. His voice was very loud, and he was making a racket pounding on the door. There was no way it wouldn't reach Kinzo's ears. Well, it certainly was reaching him, but he ignored it anyways. However, unlike the time he'd been called down for uh, lunch, he didn't fly into a rage. By now, Kinzo was calm at heart, almost as though he had taken on a philosophical view and had turned himself over to fate. Neither dinner nor the faces of my children interest me in the slightest. Gray father, <laughs> I will only leave, it, leave here if Beatrice is resurrected, or if I'm chosen as a sacrifice for the key. The demon's roulette has already started spinning. What meaning does dinner have at this point? As though painfully loud banging at the door completely failed to enter his hearing. Kinzo silently thought about his next chess move, still in his philosophical state. Just as always, Kinzo's figure couldn't be seen anywhere in the dining hall. Kraus, wearing a bitter smile, returned with Nanjo. Father says he's still not feeling well. He truly regrets missing this once-a-year once opportunity to sit together with his gathered family. Ava and Rudolph sniggered. Even Kinzo's personality, there was no way he'd show signs of regret, and none of his relatives showed any regret at his absence. Then why don't we start dinner? Go to begin. Certainly. Well then, if you will allow me. When Goda was told to start the family conference dinner, his biggest time to shine of the whole year, he nodded with a broad grin. 
Um, may I ask who lent Maria an umbrella? When Rosa timidly cut through the silence of the dining hall, everyone noticed. An umbrella? What's this about? Um, a short while back, Maria was in the Rose Garden when it started raining, and she apparently borrowed a white umbrella from someone. I wanted to thank them. It wasn't one of us. After you left, we moved to a different room and had a friendly chat that the whole the whole time. <laughs> That's right. Even after that, the siblings had a real friendly chat. The word friendly felt awkward from Hideyoshi's lips. So even those who hadn't been present could tell that the conversation hadn't been a pleasant one. At the very least, it could have been, couldn't have been me, Ava, Rudolph, Hideyoshi-san, or Kirie-san. We were together the whole time, even after Natsui, Nissan, and Rosa left. The whole time until the meal started. Nissan went up to the study with Genji-san to call father. At that time, the rest of us went straight to the dining hall, so it wasn't one of us. Couldn't have been a servant kind enough to lend an umbrella? So was it you, Goda-san? I have been in the kitchen the whole time preparing. My sincere apologies. Goda looked slightly disappointed about missing this chance to show off. At that time, Shannon and Kumasawa appeared, pushing a serving cart loaded with hors d'oeuvres. Then what about Kumasawa-san or Shannon-chan? Yes? Has something gone wrong? Because Shannon had come in part way, she shrank back, mistakenly thinking the others were searching for so for the one responsible for some error. It isn't like that. It started to rain when Maria-chan was alone in the rose garden. After that, someone lent her an umbrella. Aunt Rosa said she wanted to thank that person. Ooh, Beatrice! Maria, her mouth a thin line, said the witch's name in a small voice. Aunt Rosa explained the situation one more time. As she did, Kumasawa-san cackled. Ho, oh, ho, ho, it wasn't us. Shannon and I were preparing the rooms together, so we had, so we did not go outside. Yes, I'm sorry I wasn't able to be of assistance. Preparing the rooms? What do you mean by that? Because of the rain, we thought it would be troublesome for all the guests to return to the guest house, so the servants were ordered to prepare guest rooms inside the mansion. Really, how thoughtful. Yes, it certainly would be rude to chase us outside in this rain. Could you give it a rust? Yes. After receiving the order from Madame, Kumasawa and Cannon and I started preparing the rooms. Then it became time for dinner, so Genji ordered Cannon to, to go to the guest house and summon the children. Yes. So did Cannon find Maria on the way to the guest house and hand her the umbrella? Ooh. Wrong! The person who had actually received the umbrella denied it. Rosa was troubled. All she wanted to do was give a word of thanks to the person who had lent the umbrella but she couldn't find them she thought of asking like this with everyone gathered at the dinner would make would work immediately then it was you natsui nisan i'm sorry after everyone's friendly chat my headache was so bad that i that i've been resting in my room therefore i did not go outside then who was it george and the kids that can't be right no, it wasn't us. We were watching the television on the guest house at the whole time. Actually, we thought Maria got back to the mansion with you. Then Kanekun came and asked whether Maria was with us. That's when we first realized what, that she wasn't in the mansion. I mean, if I were it were me, I would have grabbed her hand and pulled her under the roof before giving her an umbrella. Rosa was completely baffled. One by one, the relatives and servants denied that they had done it. Even though it was really something anyone, it wasn't something anyone would need to hide. So by process of elimination, the remaining, uh, the number of remaining candidates wasn't large. Of course it wasn't me. Right after it began raining, I visited Kinzo's room and I was playing chess with him just until now. Which means that it wasn't grandfather. Wait a sec. Isn't this starting to get a little bit weird? Who's left? Then who was it? Genji-san? Huh? Uh, wait a second. Don't get me wrong. It's not like I'm searching for a culprit or anything. All I wanted to do is, as a mother, thank the person who gave Maria an umbrella in the middle of the rain. Giving an umbrella to a girl loitering in the rain was something to be praised, not hidden. Despite that, no one raised their hand. Why not? 
Everyone started whispering about how strange this was getting. Calm down, Rosa. Why don't we just ask the person who let the, who was lent the umbrella? That's what everyone had been thinking since the beginning. They were all scratching their heads at why she didn't ask Maria who had given the umbrella. However, Rosa bit her lower lip. After all, she already knew how Maria would answer if asked. Of course, Rudolph. Here, uh, Rudolph here's got it, right? Maria Chan, tell your uncle, who lent you the umbrella? Beatrice! The dining hall was wrapped in silence for an instant, but it was soon interrupted by a burst of laughter. <laughs> I see, so Beatrice, a witch of the forest, felt pity and lent her an umbrella. What a lovely story. Rosa, there you have it. Mm. Rosa couldn't believe it. Even though she just wouldn't say thanks for the umbrella, why did everything have to be so clouded in smoke? Ooh, just like Uncle Krause said, Beatrice let, let me borrow it. Ooh, ooh. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? We should all be jealous of such purity. What do you think, everyone? <laughs> Krause was laughing with a face that was clearly mocking, but Maria was overjoyed, apparently convinced that her claim was believed. How did that work? Does it mean that the witch really appeared and lent her an umbrella? Jessica asked me in a small voice that wouldn't carry over to Maria who was sitting across from me. Has Maria ever been the type to make jokes? If we had heard that kind of story pop out of my old bastard's mouth, we would have just taken it as another joke. However, it was hard to explain it away like that when Maria said it. This was getting pretty unnerving. No way. She's always been frank and serious. She's the sort who'd believe any joke. Even ones normal people could instantly tell were lies. I've never even heard her cracking jokes, cracking a joke. Aunt Rosa probably knew that better than anyone. It appeared that because of the, this weird situation, she had no idea what was going on anymore. So if Maria says she borrowed an umbrella from Beatrice, that must mean it was really Beatrice. We're talking about Maria here, so I can't think of it as some kind of metaphor or joke. It might be the best to take what she says at face value. Then what's going on? Are you saying Genji? Or someone put it on a fancy dress from the portrait and gave Maria the umbrella? I'm not sure about that. Actually, that's what I want to know. Jessica shrugged jokingly, but her expression didn't completely match her attitude. Once the hors d'oeuvres were set out and Gota showed off his vast store of knowledge, the meal began. A couple casual chats broke out here and there, but they seemed somehow distant, and the meal ended up being so quiet that you couldn't ignore the sound of the rain sneaking into the dining hall. Kumasawa and Shannon, pushing the cart, ran into Genji and Kanan on their way to the kitchen. Oh, it's Genji-san. Did you lend Maria an umbrella? An umbrella? What are you talking about? Well, I heard that when it started raining, Maria was alone in the rose garden. It seems she borrowed an umbrella from someone there, but we don't know who it was. It wasn't me. After all, I actually thought Maria-sama was in the guest house. When Battler-sama first found her, she was already holding a white umbrella. My apologies, but it was not me either. Then could it actually be the master? Both in the dining hall and right here, everyone had stated that they hadn't done it. That it only left Kinzo, but maybe he went walking down the corridor for some reason when he just happened to see Maria in the Rose Garden without even an umbrella. The master is not particularly fond of Maria-sama. I agree. I can't imagine that for Maria-sama's sake. He'd go to all the trouble of descending the stairs with an umbrella. Oh my, how troublesome. Does that mean the one who let Maria Sama was really Beatrice Sama? Ho ho ho. Kumasama laughed just like the relatives in the dining hall had laughed it off. She couldn't think about any other way to break through the smoke veiling up smoke veiling the current situation. Just then, the Chris Santa hounds clapping twice rang through the hallway. They all turned at once to see Gota coming through the dining hall. Okay, everyone. 
When serving a dinner, proper timing while setting the table is essential. Please immediately see to setting out the soup. Genji san, the women in the middle are of an important job, so please don't get in their way. Cannon glared at Gota for being rude to Genji, a person Cannon respected. Genji realizing this patted Cannon uh, once on the shoulder as a warning. Cannon reluctantly turned away and turned his expression to normal. Obey Gota's instructions. Hurry and prepare the dinner table. Come now, there's no time. Don't dawdle. Hurry! Gota grabbed the serving cart from Shannon and steadily pushed it toward the kitchen. Then please allow us to return to the kitchen. After all, Gota's temper is very short. <laughs> please excuse me as well. Kumasawa and Shannon left. Only Genji and Cannon remained. Through the window, the darkness of the rainy night could be seen, along with the occasional thunderbolt. Genji Sama, did Beatrice Sama really return? I don't know. Shall I inform the master? That's not necessary. If she truly has returned, she will eventually appear before the master of her own accord. Furthermore, she's a fickle person. It would be pointless to report to the master only to find that she did not does not appear. I wonder if this means the master's ceremony has begun. Probably. However, that has nothing to do with the furniture like us. We must continue to return the favor from we receive from the master until our final moments. Yes. That is furniture's duty. Thunder crash once more, except for those instances when, instance when lightning lit up the sky. Nothing could be seen uh, out of the window but darkness of light, of night. Just as humans rule when the sun is up, those that are not human rule when the sun is down. Ooh, spooky. The darkness of the night, now surrounded broken Jima, was ruled by another master, not the Ushiromia family. Does this master take pity on Maria when she was alone, being pummeled by the rain in the rose garden, lending her an umbrella? Cannon looked at those rose garden lights, dimly visible beyond the window. The dim lights weren't enough to illuminate the surrounding area. Looking at those lights felt like making eye contact with a witch, and Cannon forced himself to avert his gaze. If he didn't, he felt like his eyes would be absorbed by that light. Can the weather change how people act? You often hear stories about how things like atmospheric pressure can influence people's moods and physical health. For some time now, everyone had been struggling to clear the gloomy atmosphere, but any conversation was quickly cut off, and in the end, the dining hall was simply filled with the sound of rain. Dessert was some kind of chocolate cake accompanied by a pear uh, sorbet. Godasan enthusiastically explained the recipe as soon as his this final dish was pre presented, but a quick, but I quickly forgot the details. The guest of honor, grandfather, was absent. The weather was horrible. The identity of the one who lent Maria an umbrella remained a mystery. When dinner ended, no one, no one felt even one bit refreshed. It was too late now, but I realized painfully that the taste wasn't the only important part of the meal. The whole atmosphere was also critical. Go to sun. The supposed conductor of this musical piece called D Dinner did his best to enliven the place, dropping his little jokes left and right, but apparently not one of them succeeded. After taking orders for after dinner coffee, tea, and orange juice, he left the kitchen. As soon as he disappeared, Uncle Kraus spoke. My, my, what a waste that the dinner coda worked so hard to create has been, has met with such a gloomy atmosphere. Yes, absolutely. It just feels like nothing would taste good today. Huh. I'd like to know why you feel that way. Later on, I'll do all I can as your older brother to help cheer you up. Aunt Ava grimaced slightly. I've already heard that she wasn't on good terms with Uncle Kraus, but it was pretty clear now. When I looked around, I noticed that my father and Aunt Rosa were also grimacing. Apparently, there was something besides the weather troubling all of them. 
Both Aunt Ava and my dad aren't looking too happy. Really? I don't think so. I Aunt, Aunt Natsui, who was sitting on my right, but she seemed to be in a bad mood as well. She snapped back as if she was absolutely not interested. Well, our adult conversation got a little complicated. It isn't something kids like you should worry about, Battler Ha ha ha. Isn't that right, Natsui san? Kariya san? Uncle Heidi Yoshi laughed as he spoke, without, but without his usual brightness, so I could vaguely imagine just how complicated their adult conversation had become. On top of that, even that. Even at Natsui and uh, Karie, uh, the people he had directed his comment to ignored him as though he hadn't heard anything. I didn't know what conversa kind of conversation they had had while us kids were away, but it reminded me of how Dad had said he had had stomach cramps when he arrived at the mansion. The family conference must have been a, might have been a playful reunion to us kids, but it was definitely different for the adults. After Uncle Hideyoshi's comment was ignored by the other adults, um, and an awkward silence fell over the room, Karie uh, son spoke up. We were talking about how the kids' careers would turn out. Such as what lies in your future, Battler Coon? Will you just drift on to college? Wouldn't that be a little disheartening as the starting line for their long race of life? Hey, wait a sec. Kariye, if you start talking about something like that in the middle of a meal, it won't digest well and we'll all end up getting constipated. <laughs> that's right, that's right. We were talking about Battler Coon and Jessica Chan's careers. You've got to think seriously about the future. <laughs> Heidi, Yoshi, Heidi Yoshi heartily agreed as if they had been talking about that. But that was probably wrong. Kyrie had obviously been trying to change the subject. However, if Kurie had determined that this was the best course of action for now, she was probably right. Taking this into account, I cast aside my suspicions as the cause behind Aunt Ava and Dad's bad moods. At long last, the serving cart returned, filled with coffee and tea. Kumasawa and Shannon served it to everyone. Goto-san then explained that this concluded tonight's meal. If only the mood had been a bit more cheery, it might have been the best dinner of my life. It was a shame this best of dinners couldn't have been uh, had under the best conditions. Ooh, George, is dinner over now? Over? Yes. With this, dinner is finished. Don't be rude. Stay in your seat and kindly drink up. Ooh. Maria looked as though she was really excited by the occasional crashing thunder. Maybe she wanted to quickly finish eating and run over to the window. She had been finishing, fidgeting for a while, waiting for the meal to end. Some people are afraid of thunder while others find it interesting, and Maria was apparently one of the latter sort. Therefore, when she heard from George that dinner was over, a huge smile broke across her face. She then rose from her seat, took out her handbag, which she set under her seat, never having left it even while she was eating, and began fishing around inside of it. No one seemed co particularly concerned by this behavior. What's that? Where did you get it? George was the first to notice it, as he spoke, Battler soon noticed, too. Oh... They saw that Maria was now holding a beautiful western-style envelope. In front of the envelope, the Ushiromiya family crest, the one-winged ingle, was done on a go in gold leaf. Furthermore, the fact that it was sealed with a dark red wax made it clear that it wasn't something Maria could have brought as a prank. Maria-chan, what is that? It seemed that Natsui had also noticed the strangeness of that envelope Maria was holding. Her voice sounded too serious for someone admonishing a small child so that relatives around us finally noticed too. What happened, Natsui Nisan? What is that? Maria, where did you pick that up? That envelope has Kinzo-san's. When Nanjo muttered that, even us kids 
could understand why everyone seemed frozen solid. That envelope that Maria had was one of the Usharomia heads custom-made envelopes for private use. In other words, it could only mean one thing. This envelope contained a message from Kinzo. Ho! Oh, what is an envelope like this doing here? Now that's an interesting thing to come jumping out at us. Just let me have a peek. Ooh, no way, I'll read it. I was told to read it to everyone. Uncle Hideyoshi tried to snatch the envelope from Maria's hands, but she protected it as though hugging it and didn't let go. Hideyoshi, you can't force use force against a child. Maria-chan, where did you get this envelope? Ooh, I got it for Beatrice when she gave me the umbrella. She told me to read it to everyone after the meal was over. I'm the witch's m messenger. Ooh. Messenger? <laughs> the almighty witch of the island sure likes to mess around. Battler tried to joke about it, but no one laughed. I wonder what's written inside of it, Maria-chan. Ooh, gonna read it. Ooh. Maria casually opened the envelope. It was sealed only with wax, so she had... Uh... So she had to remove this, uh, the sealing wax to open it. That sealing wax fell onto the desk. Hideyoshi hastily picked it up and stared fixedly at it. Then he set it in the center of the table when Atsui and Karie, uh and Nanja stared at it. Imprinted on the sealing wax was a one-winged eagle, which the Ushiromiya family crest and also Kinzo's personal crest. This, the family had's personal crest. I know it from the letters I have received from Kinzo some before. Without a doubt, this is his wax seal. But aren't there several things in this mansion bearing that crest? For example, if there was some kind of stamp for wax seals, couldn't someone other than Kinzo have used it? No. Kinzo would always use a ring on his finger, his proof of the Usharomia family headship when he sealed the wax. This shape and complex design is definitely Kinzo Sun's seal. And he threw out that ring to start the stuff uh, and the thunder, if you guys remember that. And the thunder like accepted it. That is not necessarily so. Anyone in the family must have received a letter from father at least once. We can't eliminate the possibility that someone used that wax as a model to create a fake seal and pass themselves off as father. I agree with Anigi. No matter how much the seal resembles Dad, we can't prove that it's the real thing. So it doesn't prove that this envelope came from him. I absolutely agree. I cannot approve the arbitrary deciding that this letter came from Father based solely on the wax seal. Dr. Nancho, couldn't you use a bit more discretion with your vague words? I apologize. It was not my place to speak. One after another, all the siblings from Crass downwards rejected Nanjo's statement, saying that the envelope Maria held wasn't necessarily from Kinzo. Well, yeah, it probably isn't from him. They were afraid. They feared from the bottom of their hearts that Kinzo's intentions were written in there, and that it might be some announcement regarding the inheritance that would decidedly be unfavorable to them. Maria, the person who gave you that envelope was the same person who lent you the umbrella, right? Ooh! I don't know what ooh means. Is it true? Ooh! Yes! Ooh! So in other words, the witch Beatrice gave Maria Chan that envelope along with the umbrella. Ooh! Maria nodded forcefully. I agree with my husband. It's a dubious letter handed over by some suspicious person. It isn't even worth reading. There's nothing wrong with just reading it, right? I agree. That would be stupid not to read it. Battler said to Jessica in a small voice, trying to act tough, but Natsui heard him clearly and glared at him with threatening eyes. And then, our Beatrice told you to read it after the meal was over, right, Maria? Ooh. It's okay, everyone. This envelope didn't come from Grandfather, but from Beatrice. Regardless of who actually wrote it, why can't we just hear what's inside before we decide? That's right. Even if Father didn't necessarily write it, I'd still like to know what's written inside. 
Maria Tran, I'm sorry that I tried to take it from you by force earlier. I apologize. So you will you read it aloud in front of everyone? Maria, read it. Ooh. As all the relatives stared fiercely at Maria, she spread the letter open with a rustle. Do you think it really did come from Dad? Impossible. Whenever Father has announced something to us in the past, he would always send Genji if he didn't do it directly, correct? I cannot believe that he would use such a joke-like approach. That's right. Maria, a messenger? That definitely doesn't suit Father's taste. Rosa, could this be Maria-chan trying to surprise us by putting on some kind of show? Maria isn't really a kid who's capable of something so thoughtful. <laughs> Gonna read it. Ooh. The words came out of Maria's mouth, but for some reason her voice seemed different from usual. Everyone went suddenly silent. Welcome to Rokunjima, members of the Usharomia family. I am Beatrice, the alchemist for this family, employed by Kizo Sama himself. Ha! <laughs> That's crazy! Quiet! I have served him for many years in accordance with our contract, but on this day, Kizo has announced the final suspension of that contract. Therefore, I ask that you acknowledge my resignation from the position of the family alchemist from this day forth. How foolish! What nonsense! I can't stand to listen to it! And now, there is one part of the contract that must be explained at explained to all present. I, Beatrice, lent Kinzo-sama a vast quantity of gold under certain terms. One of these terms specifies that all the gold is to is to be returned to me upon the termination of the contract. Furthermore, I am to receive everything of the Usharomia family as interest. Ridiculous! It's been ridiculous from the very beginning! So basically, so it's basically one of those things, right? Doesn't it sound like just one of those contracts with the devil? The contract has expired, so they come to collect the interest. Is she trying to grab some retirement money for her old age or something? What a cheeky witch! Battler could now isn't the time to joke around. Battler made a face as if to ask, If I can't make fun of this, what can I make fun of? Some of the adults were fit were pale while others looked dazed. After hearing this, you may feel as though Kinzo Sama has been savagely ruthless. However, Kinzo Sama did append with a special clause to the contract so that you would have a chance to preserve your wealth and honor. If and only wit, if that special clause is fulfilled, I will lose my rights to the gold and the interest for all eternity. A special clause? What is it? Special clause. Beatrice retains the right to collect the gold and accumulate an interest upon the termination of the contract. However, if someone, able is, to, someone is able to discover the hidden gold of this contract, Beatrice must obtain these, uh, must abandon these rights for all time. The collection of the interest will proceed shortly, but if any one of you fulfills the terms of this special clause, I shall return everything, including the portion that has already been collected. Furthermore, as a first step in this collection of Kinzo-sama's debt, I have taken the possession of the Ushiromiya family head ring which signifies the passage of the Usharomia family headship from one individual to another. I ask that you confirm this for yourselves by examining the imprint on the wax seal. Are they trying to claim that, that that's the meaning behind the seal? That father would relinquish his ring is unthinkable. Kraus stared at the wax as if trying to burn a hole through it. Ava and Rudolph were doing the same over his shoulder. Come to think of it, when we were playing chess, I did have a strange feeling that something was missing from Kizu-sun's finger. Dr. Nanjo, Don't say something so careless just because of a vague memory. We can't prove the authenticity here. Only by asking Father directly can we determine whether he's really handed over his ring and whether this letter tells the truth. Th that's right. It's just as Karie says. Do you really think... Kinzo-san will tell you? After all, that person's thoughts sometimes surpass the bounds of common sense. No matter what happens, it's all non still nonsense. In the first place, the illusion of gold itself is one of Father's tricks. 
I've already heard enough talk with gold from the rest of you. But this is a witch speaking, right? About how the inheritance and all of the assets will be handed over the one who finds the gold, right? So maybe Beatrice some of his father's legal advisor in charge of his funds. We can't possibly trust some strange person who entrusts such a suspicious paper to a child. Aniki, we need you to be frank with us. Is it possible Dad's assets are managed by someone you don't know? No, that's impossible. As a family head's representative, I control all of Father's assets. It should be impossible for anyone to do as they please with them without me knowing it. <laughs> without me knowing it. So this must mean there are some assets you don't control, right, Kraus? How foolish such assets couldn't possibly exist. Oh. But there is such a thing. An asset of Father's that you don't control. There is no way no such thing could exist. No, it does. It's Father's. No, Beatrice is hidden gold. Let's keep it simple. In short, Dad has trusted some confident that Aniki doesn't even know about. Furthermore, this person has always been in charge of watching and managing the gold. Or it could be some eccentric rich person who offered him a loan with rules like a double contract. Could it be that the confident called Be- that this confident called Beatrice is trying to test which Kinzo children is most worthy to be financed by her gold? Kyrie's question was one that all the siblings wanted to answer. Upon reflection, they realized that Kinzo's strange epitaph had hung in the hall beneath the witch's portrait for quite some time, and while it had long been whispered that whoever saw the puzzle would receive everything, no one ever clearly stated it. It was just something that everyone had hoped might be true. And right here, right now, the thing they'd hoped for that had been clearly stated had been clearly stated in Beatrice's letter. It clearly specified that everything of the Usharomia family would be given to the one who found the gold. Kizosama has already made has already Kizosama has already publicly displayed the location of the hidden gold within the epitaph under my portrait. The rules apply equally to all who can read the epitaph. If you discover the gold, I shall return everything to you. Tonight I ask that you enjoy your battle of wits with Kinzo-san to the fullest. I, so, I sincerely pray that this night will be both intellectual and elegant. Beatrice the Golden Witch Father, I know you can hear me. Please respond. The door to Kinzo's study was being violently and harshly beaten against over and over like a percussion instrument. The yells coming from the other side belonged to Kraus, Rudolph, and sometimes Ava. It was the siblings who were trying to intrude upon Kinzo's study to question him about the truth behind the mysterious letter. Kinzo was eating. An elegant tablecloth was set over his desk at the fabulous dinner that had adorned the table uh, down in the hiding hall was reproduced here. Kinzo continued his meal in silence. Shannon, taking away an empty plate, looked uncomfortably between the door being patted on and Kinzo's face. Everyone is calling for you, but what should I do? Leave them. God and my meals both hold silence as a virtue. Should I silence them? There's no need. It doesn't even reach my ears. Kinzo enjoyed his food apparently indifferent. Genji quietly lowered his head and took a single step back. As he did, Cannon who stood in reserve like a shadow behind and stood the side of Genji opened his mouth. Maria Sama apparently received a letter from Beatrice Sama, so I imagine they want to test its authenticity. <laughs> Has she started already then? Come, Beatrice. I have no shortage of coins to be wagered. Shall we enjoy this night to the fullest? I don't think I'll lose. Your smile will be mine for all eternity. If I could see it one more time, I wouldn't regret losing my wealth, my honor, or even my life. Well then, the roulette has begun to spin. Which pocket will the ball fall into? Noir, Rouge, 
or house takes it all. Come, you may begin, Beatrice. I'll show you the power of miracles once more. Dang, two hours. The strange letter that the witch had entrusted to Maria wiped all memories of dinner from our minds. Maria was repeatedly barraged with questions by Aunt Rosa and the parents, and became increasingly ill-tempered when they refused to believe her. If kids tried to butt in, if we were, if we kids tried to butt in, they'd probably ignore us. Our parents were all stirred up, firing back and forth about the gold and the distribution of assets, and completely forgetting that we were even there. I'd already guessed they'd been talking like this in the shadows, but I hadn't thought they'd be so blunt. It gave all his kids a considerable shock. From what we could overhear, all the parents wanted more money as soon as possible. Back and forth about grandfather's inheritance. Back and forth about the distribution of the, of the gold if it was found. About advance payments and cash. It was so despicable I could hardly bear to watch, even though one of them was my father. It looked as like Jessica felt the same way. We left our seats without being asked to and went to hang somewhere well away from our parents. I get it. Now I totally see why grandfather hates coming down for meals. I'm so disillusioned with our parents right now. All that about money and the inheritance. How could they act like that right in the open? Well, I'm already completely disillusioned with my old bastard. There's no way I could think any worse of him. Huh. Th that's exactly the same for me. Still, that freaking shocked me. Shocked me to the core. Jessica looked down at the floor, irritated. She was always talking about how bad her parents were, but maybe she hadn't really felt that way deep down inside. The depths of Jessica's shock made that clear. You're all minors being supported by your parents, so you might not understand. But getting money is neither a simple nor a petty, pretty thing. I won't try to force you to understand right now, since you're still kids. But even so, I want you to realize that your parents are just doing their best in their own way. Oh, great. George has gotten all mature. George, I know you're working hard as a full-fledged member of society, but does that mean you're, you turn into a shameless, greedy vulture like our parents whenever you start talking about money and assets? If it were only, my, if it were only for my own benefit, then no, I wouldn't do that. However, when your family and your employees, your subordinates and their families are all counting on you, there are some times when you must fight. I hate that kind of fight. That back and forth about grandfather's inheritance just makes you want to puke. Jessica pretended to spit violently. The harsh reaction made the depths of her pain very clear. Let's stop talking about this. All this about grandfather's hidden gold, property, and inheritance is our parents' problems, not ours. I agree. At the very least, I think, okay. at the very least, I think children have a duty to be considerate and stay out of their parents' way when they talk, when they're talking together. Shh. Sounds pretty boring. Everyone knows the phrase adults are filthy, but we, but we now had seen that for ourselves. And that really did give us a considerable shock. George and Nikki was pretty much an adult. And I had already been disillusioned with my dad, so the shock wasn't big for us, but Jessica seemed to be taken at heart. Apparently she received a bigger she'd received a bigger blow than I thought. She'd always talks badly about her parents, but it looks like she had looks like she hadn't changed at all on the inside. Even now she's a still a pure hearted, delicate person who can who can't doubt others. I'm sure she respected her parents as much as anyone else does. And then our parents started raging about going on money, money, inheritance, inheritance, my money. Right in front of all the other uh, parents and children, it's no surprise she received such a shock hearing that. Jessica Chan, please don't start hating your mother and father. I won't ask you to understand them, but at least don't hate them. I get it. Just leave me alone for a bit. Six years ago, I would have, I would have kept taunting Jessica even after she got all dejected. But I guess I really have grown over the last six years.
I realize it'd be better to leave Jessica alone right now. Jessica suddenly looks away sulkily and left the parlor. She probably wanted to be alone for a while. I could do nothing with wordlessly watching her back as she left. Come to think of it, I wonder where Maria Chen went. She's probably pouting in front of the portrait. Maria truly looked up to witches and, and she'd expected that coming in direct contact with Beatrice and receiving a letter's proof would surprise everyone and make them happy. However, the adults had doubted its authenticity thoroughly, bombarding Maria with con questions and refusing to accept her story. Even for me, it wasn't hard to imagine how such, how much that must have hurt Maria. We couldn't sp speak to Maria or Jessica. In the end, George and I just abandoned ourselves to the sound of the falling rain in the dark night. I wonder what's happening with that typhoon. Maybe there's something about it on the news. George and Nikki started walking over to the corner of the parlor where the television was. He hadn't called me over, and I really couldn't have cared less where the ty typhoon was on the sea now. So without going over to the television, I loitered over to the window. The wind hasn't picked up, hasn't picked up that much here, but I wonder if it's horrible over the sea. I did hear about a s severe storm. Oh. Uh, warning on the weather report. <laughs> ah, kurie san I take it those big talks between the adults are going smoothly, yeah? She seemed to catch the sarcasm. Kurie, uh, shrugged. I wonder if that stomach ache of a discussion will continue all night. It's not going to be fun. Well then, please enjoy playing vultures to grandfather's property as much as you like. I feel sick. I'll agree with you on that. If I could just slip away like you, I'd do it. Unfortunately, I can't. Even if I'm not allowed to speak, we spouses are pretty rough too. Korea kept, uh, took a deep breath, smiling bitterly. That's right. They probably won't let Korea speak since she only married into the family. Still, as dad's partner, she had no choice but to stay by his side and support him. She's probably had to bear with the full brunt of this mental pressure more than me. I wasn't going to apologize, but realizing that I'd spoken too harshly, I cut the sarcasm for the time being. How does So how does it look? Are they still stuck on the topic of the mysterious witch Beatrice? More or less. Those four siblings are always piling up secret agreements when they come together to discuss the division of grandfather's inheritance. They're saying that some unknown fifth person has appeared and is trying to make things even more complicated and there's no way that'll make for a peaceful conversation. Just when you think they're snarling at each other, they set up a common front. Natsui Nissan's not the only one getting headaches. On the one hand, they all want a larger portion than the other siblings, so they're all rivals. But on the other hand, they don't want one yen to be snatched up by anyone other than the siblings, so they're all allies. Alright, I'm going to stop here for today, guys. Um, yeah, getting really interesting now. I think I'm still in part one or chapter one, um, which this is pretty long so far. Um, I like that Beatrice is getting involved. I am excited to see her kind of, uh, manipulate and play with things a lot more in the rest of the story. So yeah, I'm really enjoying this now. Um, yeah, the beginning was really boring for me, but now starting to get into plot. I'm uh, going to be excited when it starts getting uh, kind of crazy. So yeah, hopefully we get to that soon.